Thank you for watching the Going Digital Conference. I am Marketa Gregorova, a member of the European Parliament, and I am co-organizing this conference. And I would like to introduce you to the pressing issue of disinformation, which thrive exactly in the times of crises, such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Many citizens are now enduring a great deal of hardships because of the pandemic, be it the loss of a job, a dear relative, or for the disease itself. Such periods of great uncertainty and instability generate the ideal conditions for disinformation to thrive. Fear and a sense of disorientation lead people to quickly find culprits and simple solutions. This may reassure and give the illusion of controlling the unfolding of the events, but these circumstances are then exploited by a wide array of actors, which create false myths and manipulate the most vulnerable members of our society. All this makes the coronavirus the perfect implementing ground for disinformation campaigns. It is important to underline that in the context of a pandemic, which is a strictly health-related issue, these practices not only pollute our democracy and create toxic online environments, but also put people's lives in danger. So, who hides behind the disinfotemic, as we might call it, we are now experiencing? Who are the actors involved? I divide them into three categories. First, individuals and industries profiting out of the pandemic by selling bogus remedies. Second, conspiracy theorists spreading false narratives on the virus's origin and potential vaccines. And of course, third, foreign governments which try to leverage on the current crisis to advance their political agendas. Surely, such categories can overlap. For instance, foreign governments can definitely capitalize on existing conspiracy theories to reach their purposes. The line dividing misinformation and disinformation gets quite blurred as well. While some people may inattentively spread falsehoods and others may do it on purpose. The line dividing misinformation and disinformation gets quite blurred as well. While some people may inattentively spread falsehoods and others may do it on purpose, the real-world consequences are alike. In Iran, over 700 people between February and April lost their lives as they thought that the ingestion of methanol could cure COVID-19. The Belgian Poison Control Centre registered a 15% increase of incidents involving bleach ingestion after Trump suggested disinfectant could help against COVID. It doesn't matter whether such myths were spread intentionally or not. False information is directly harming people. And it's all the more difficult to deal with the problem when misinformation is championed by the highest authorities, as in the case of the former US president. With respect to government-sponsored disinformation, starting from February this year, we have seen a surge of disinfo campaigns by the usual suspects, namely the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. Their attacks targeted Western audiences, both in the United States and Europe. As of July, the East Stratcom Task Force identified 550 false or misleading narratives produced or disseminated by pro-Kremlin government-affiliated sources, the most popular being Sputnik News and Russia Today. When the first wave faded away, so did COVID-related disinformation, but activity resurfaced recently with the advent of the second wave and the potential vaccines coming under spotlight. For what concerns China, the regime found itself in sudden need of repairing the reputational damage suffered after the coronavirus outbreak. To do so, it put into motion its propaganda machine consisting of aggressive statements by diplomats, later dubbed Wolf Warrior Diplomacy, PR stunts, mask diplomacy, party-driven media coverage and social media campaigns. First accounts of Chinese propaganda were identified in Italy, first European country to have a major outbreak, after China sent the first batches of protective equipment with great fanfare. A social media analysis conducted on Twitter by the Italian company Alchemy found that around 40% of tweets containing two hashtags greeting the Chinese authorities had been posted by automated accounts. In the meantime, officials from the upper echelons of the party were also active in boosting the country's image abroad with misleading content. For instance, Chinese Foreign Affairs Ministry spokesperson 
Hua Chunin, shared a video showing Italian citizens greeting China while the Chinese hymn played in the background. Assisted by Taiwanese fact-checkers, Italian media later proved that the video had been grossly manipulated. In parallel to such attempts at boosting its reputation abroad, Beijing also tried to put the blame of the outbreak elsewhere. Multiple Chinese sources repeatedly pointed at the US and Italy as the original birthplaces of the virus and are continuing to do so by exploiting conspiracy theories and dubious media sources. Now we find ourselves again in an extremely delicate situation. While potential vaccines have been released, social media analysis firms already identified a surge of vaccine-related conspiracy theories and disinformation. Millions of Europeans are being daily disinformed by unreliable sources on shady online groups. The multiplication of health-related falsehoods may delay vaccination plans and consequently cost lives. Most of the false narratives put into question the origin of the vaccines and the motives behind their administration to the population, usually summoning Bill Gates, George Soros or 5G technology as scapegoats. All these phenomena have certainly been amplified by the spread of QAnon, the US-born conspiracy theory revolving around the figure of Trump, which now has hundreds of thousands of proselytes around Europe as well, with Germany being particularly affected. On its part, Russia is currently conducting a disinformation campaign, specifically targeting Eastern Europe, but also Latin America and India, to promote its so-called Sputnik V COVID-19 vaccine. A way of doing so is certainly denigrating vaccines produced in the West and question their safety by spreading unverified rumors. The objective here is twofold sowing distrust within the European democracies and the European Union, between citizens and public authorities, and advancing Russia's commercial interest by convincing as many countries as possible to sign contracts with Russian producers. To conclude, public authorities and online platforms have implemented several measures to contain and fight disinformation. The Commission has issued a Code of Conduct to which the major social networks abide to and is currently funding fact-checking platforms throughout the Union. Social networks have made more transparent many of their features and deleted several sources of disinformation. However, the present situation clearly shows these measures have not been as effective as originally thought. In the process of finding new, valid ways to tackle this crucial issue, however, we cannot allow free speech and transparency to fall victim of poorly thought approaches. Any strategy needs to include an impact assessment on the fundamental rights that all online users enjoy, so to guarantee an internet free of dangerous falsehoods without targeting innocent users. Thank you.